My Lords, that concludes oral questions. <laughs> Private notice question on Afghanistan, food shortages, Baroness de Sousa. My Lords, I beg leave to ask a question of which I have given private notice, and I declare an interest as a co-founder of a school for girls in Kabul uh, some more than 20 years ago. Um, the question is as follows. To ask Her Majesty's Government what discussions they are having with the authorities in Afghanistan regarding food shortages and what assistance they are providing civilians in that country. My Lords, reference to the government of Afghanistan on the order paper is a drafting error. My Lords, the humanitarian situation, as we all know, is dire and of deep concern and has been a central subject of all our conversations with all players, including at an operational level with the Taliban as well. We have pressed the Taliban directly to respect humanitarian principles and allow aid agencies to operate freely. My right hon. Friend, the Prime Minister, has announced that the UK will double its assistance for Afghanistan to £286 million this financial year. And on 31st of October, my right hon. Friend allocated £50 million for immediate needs. This will provide immediately around uh, 2.5 million Afghans with life-saving food, emergency health services, shelter and warm clothing. Minister, Order. I thank the Minister for his uh, answer. And I think it is agreed generally um, that this, there is no time now to use food or indeed money as bargaining tools. The severe food shortage in Afghanistan has been long anticipated. And we know that the purchase, transport and distribution of large amounts of grain takes time and organisation. May I ask the Minister to work not only through the UN, but with a larger number of NGOs, both here and abroad, which still have a presence in Afghanistan and in neighbouring countries, and which, if coordinated, could, with judicious cash injections, help to stabilise market grain prices and distribute food in the worst hit rural areas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My Lords, I <coughs> agree with the noble lady, and let me assure the noble lady the government is doing exactly that. I myself, as the minister responsible for our relations with Afghanistan and South Asia, have been working very closely with near partners in terms of humanitarian support. We've been working directly with UN agencies, including OCHA, UNHCR, UNICEF. We've been having regular calls. Um, on this, uh, the engagement I am quite happy to discuss in detail with the noble lady, but only yesterday, for example, I had a further meeting with UNICEF on the importance of humanitarian support and indeed health provision in Afghanistan. We continue to work with key partners as well as other international near neighbours as well as the wider global community. My Lords, uh, many people are in danger of starvation in Afghanistan, and the death rate will be highest amongst young children. To stop huge numbers of, of deaths, action is imperative. Could the Minister tell the House whether the Government will intervene uh, to secure the release of some of the Afghan assets that have been frozen in the USA and elsewhere, doing this in a targeted way uh, which will support the prevention of the complete economic collapse in this country? And will the Government also promote provide additional funding for the International Committee of the Red Cross, which is continuing to operate in Afghanistan across public services, uh, including uh, education, but especially in the provision of health care. For the noble lady, on her first point, we are working with international partners, including international financial institutions, on the issue of cash which is held, but of course there are notable provisions and conditionality in terms of releasing funds to the current administration. On her second point, I can also further reassure the noble lady, I have met with Peter Mowat at the ICRC on a number of occasions, and the £50 I have announced part of that funding will be in support of the ICR programmes on the ground. Um, Nations Defence Committee of this House, which I served on when we carried out our inquiry into Afghanistan, laid bare the challenges, particularly for women and young girls, and this crisis will have a disproportionate impact upon them. One month ago, precisely, Simon Gass, the Prime Minister's envoy, met the Taliban. They said that part of the discussion was normalisation of relations. The Minister has on a number of occasions directly to me indicated that we will not be working directly with the Taliban. Has the Government received any commitments 
that humanitarian and foodstuffs through international bodies will actually be directed via Taliban authorities to the people who need it most. So what assurances has the government been given that the commitment of, its com the, commitment of the humanitarian assistance will get through to the people? So, first of all, on the issue of women and girls, I'm engaging quite directly with a number of women leaders. Most recently I met with Hasina Safi. I also met recently with Fatma, Fatma Gulani is to inform our policy medium term, in term, particularly on issues of girls' education and women's health. On this immediate point of direct humanitarian aid, we do not intend in any of our support to give money directly to the Taliban. Their cooperation is required, but the money will be handed to established players who are operating on the ground. The ICRC, I recently met with the Aga Khan Development Network, who are operational, and they are respected and uh, partners for the UK as well. My lords, nobody who heard the interview yesterday with John Simpson can fail to have been moved and angered. And will my noble friend assure me that Her Majesty's Government will raise this matter as one of urgency at the United Nations Security Council with a view to getting an international delegation to assess the situation and to act urgently upon it? And uh, as far as the UN Security Council is concerned, I myself have directly engaged in a very recent de debate on Afghanistan. In terms of delegations, we are engaging very at senior level with near partners, including other key countries such as Pakistan and Qatar. And of course, we're working directly with the UN agencies who are already on the ground. Now is the time to get aid out through the door and to the people, and that's what we're focused on. My Lord's comments, and of course, on the 18th of October, only £35 million of the £286 million had been allocated according to the government, and I welcome the £50 million that he's announced today. But David Beasley, who I know, and I know the noble Lord, the Minister knows, is not one for hyperbole, and he has said the position is absolutely dire, and they require $220 million a month. What is he doing to ensure that we do get that aid out quickly to stop the disaster that David Beasley said would happen? My Lords, I, I share uh, the view that the Noble Lord has expressed and indeed what my Noble Friend talked of the report of John Simpson. I have met directly with those fleeing the Taliban. Uh, I have been long engaged on the evacuation process. These heart-rendering stories aren't just stories for me. They have been direct testimonies. And I assure the Noble Lord that I am practically on a daily basis engaging to ensure our funds are allocated at the earliest opportunity through trusted partners, uh, some who I've already named, but equally we implore other countries to stand by their verbal commitments to ensure money and, importantly, humanitarian support gets through and gets through immediately. My Lords, my lords I declare my interest as a trustee, I beg your pardon, as an ambassador for HALO, a charity which is engaged in mine and improvised explosive device clearances in Afghanistan. My Lords, looking at this objectively, we invaded the country. We left the people to fend for themselves. Is that the least we can do to save them from starvation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I totally agree with the Noble Lord, and that's exactly what we're focused on. My Lords, it is quite clear that one of the reasons for starvation in the country is, of course, so many women and girls who are now no longer able to work, and they have been deprived of that. One of the conditions that must be imposed on the Afghan government is that those women and girls can go back to proper employment and not be barred as they are today. Again, I agree with my noble friend who speaks with uh, a great deal of insight on this particular issue. Let me assure my noble friend that we are focused on um, dealing directly with women leaders in identifying which provinces we have seen real progress in, and indeed, in certain provinces, we have seen girls returning to higher education, indeed, returning back to work employment as well, and we are focused on ensuring the objectives my noble friend has just highlighted are part of our discussions. The urgency, if the urgency of the situation is such that we should surely not be over-eager to impose conditions on aid. Can the noble lord the minister say where are the bottlenecks, and is the Taliban fully cooperating with the efforts to provide aid. Uh, 
My Lords, I have not minced my words. I, I don't believe the Taliban has changed. I've always sustained that. However, with every dark cloud, there is a glimmer. Recently, we've seen them supportive, for example, of the continuation or re restart of the polio campaign. I think we need to take encouragement from that. But logistics is a challenge, and that's why we must work with trusted partners who have the established networks. And organizations such as the ICRC, UNICEF, and the Al Khan Development Network are three organizations who have such structures in place. Uh, to look and reflect on the experiences learned from the early days of aid distribution in Afghanistan that, quite frankly, even from the aid community and the head of that uh, whole body, was a total mess. And maybe there will be some lessons learned going forward. My Lords, I assure you we learned the lessons of other conflicts as well, including those in Yemen and elsewhere, and ensure those lessons are put into practice here. My Lords, 22.8 million 0.8 million people are identified as food insecure in Afghanistan, a position that has become more acute with the Taliban takeover. Whilst welcoming the financial announcement today, could the noble lord, the minister, indicate what further work will be undertaken with the World Food Programme in their work in Afghanistan, with particular reference to addressing poverty and reducing malnutrition? My Lords, let me assure the noble lady, both with the World Food Programme, established agencies on the ground, and indeed all UN partners. We have engaged at the highest level. I have engaged directly with the Secretary General, the Deputy Secretary General, all the heads of the different agencies, uh, and we are working directly with the World Food Programme. What is needed is coordination on the ground, and that's why we've implored the UN as well to ensure all humanitarian activities are coordinated. And I assure further uh, Your Lordship's House that both my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, as well as the new Foreign Secretary, my right honourable friend, Liz Truss, is engaging directly on issues of key partners. Indeed, she is currently visiting Asia, where we will be having discussions specific to the role of the Muslim world in leading and ensuring that the Taliban stand up for their promises, and she will be having discussions with the likes of Indonesia as we continue to have discussions with the likes of Qatar, Pakistan. My Lord, the Minister agree to revisit the list of ODA cuts to NGOs who are running programmes of volunteering within Afghanistan to do with health, education and food distribution, such as VSO, for example, to check whether, in these circumstances, instead of their budgets and programmes being cut, they could be cranked up and reinforced instead of decommissioned. My Lords, uh, I've already said that the Government has announced an increase of funding to £286 million, but it is appropriate that we allocate this funding in a structured way with trusted partners to ensure support gets through to the people who need it most. On the issue of volunteering, which the noble lady raises, of course the challenge in Afghanistan is volunteers at the moment, particularly those who are non-Afghans, are unable to enter, and equally those who are Afghan nationals are unable to operate. My Lords, um, may I say to the noble lords and minister how pleased I am that he mentioned the role of Muslim countries. Um, what discussion has he uh, uh, undertaken with administration of Afghanistan and uh, the leadership of Qatar uh, to ensure that I, not only ICRCs and uh, World Muslim League uh, and Qatar Foundation are taking a lead, uh, but also that we do not become oblivious to the vulnerable families uh, whilst you know, we become, as they become statistics of growth poverty, deaths and destruction, as has happened in Yemen. My Lords, let me assure the noble lady, we operationally, as I've said, uh, Sir Simon Gass and uh, Martin Longden met with the Taliban and pressed on the issue and the importance of human rights within Afghanistan as well as humanitarian corridors. Through our close liaison with UN agencies, we have seen that those corridors are operational support is beginning to get through, but it needs coordination. And there is a sketchy picture, depending on what province of Afghanistan you talk about, on the role of the Muslim world and the Islamic world in particular. And I'm very clear on this. There is no better way of challenging the negative narrative on women and girls that the Taliban peddle than esteemed leaders who are from the Muslim world, and yes, they are women as well. And we need to ensure that we reel in behind them to show that Islam is not one that negates women's rights, it actually promotes them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, coordination 
Taliban is clearly crucial if aid is to get through to the people. But uh, alas, the Taliban are not wholly in control of Afghanistan, certainly of large swathes of it. Uh, to what extent uh, does the minister assess that the conflict between the Taliban and the ISK is going to hinder the delivery of aid to the people? My Lord, the noble and gallant Lord again speaks from great insight and experience of the region, and he is quite right, of course, the situation with the ISKP, but also the noble Lord would also be aware that there is fragmentation within the Taliban. Of course, there are different parties within the Taliban who are also wrestling for control, and depending on who has the greatest influence, they have the greatest influence over respective regions. So we are working through the nuances of that. But I think if one thing I will say for the Taliban, they're realising they may have wanted administration, but being in government is not an easy job. Uh, uh, the, the Minister, I'm sure, knows well enough that even prior to the national takeover by the Taliban, uh, large swathes of, the, uh, of Afghanistan were in effect controlled by the, uh, by the Taliban. Uh, and in those areas, though it's patchy, uh, there was cooperation between the Taliban administration and NGOs, food agencies and the like. Can you tell us whether that is still the case now that there's been a national takeover? And, and, and if not, what, are the, uh, what circumstances have changed? My Lord, the noble note is, of course, quite correct. Indeed, on the initial stages of the takeover of the Taliban of Afghanistan, what was very clear, those areas that had been under control, not all of them, but some of them, there had been operational cooperation with aid agencies. UNICEF, for example, the first meeting I had uh, very early on, immediately in August, uh, verified that fact. And indeed, UNICEF have increased their footprint, not decreased it, since the Taliban takeover. The other area which we're still working through, of course, is that until we have the security in place to ensure that aid can be delivered, we need to work province by province and ensure whichever agency has the greatest influence on the ground, we can leverage their operational capacity and support it accordingly.